Most other world leaders are used to letting the West get their way with anything they want. However, a captivating group of African leaders has risen, marked by their strong commitment to create their own path, free from the Western influence and ideology. These daring individuals fearlessly challenge the West, confronting head on the biases and double standards it continues to practice. Their efforts echo throughout the continent, delivering a powerful message of sovereignty and self-determination. If you enjoy our content on this channel, please leave a like and sub so more people can see this. These African leaders bravely speak their minds and make bold decisions that challenge the way things have always been. Even though Western countries and their media have a lot of influence, these African leaders are creating their own unique path. They proudly stand up for their values and dreams for their countries, showing they are determined and true to themselves. Their bravery and determination give hope to others and change how people see African leaders worldwide. They work hard and show that African leadership is strong and full of potential, breaking old stereotypes and creating a powerful new image for the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we are diving into the inspiring stories of nine African leaders who fearlessly take on the West and its media. First, let's talk about President Akufoado from Ghana. He's really strong in his opposition to the LGBTQ agenda being forced on Ghana and Africa. Even though people keep questioning him about it, he sticks to his beliefs and says it's not a priority for the people of Ghana. In a powerful video at a church, he says he will never legalize homosexuality while he's president. He's all about protecting Ghana's culture and values, and he won't let outside pressures change that. He's really committed to keeping Ghana's identity and making sure African nations stay sovereign. Now let's talk about Felix Chisakoti, who is really strong and brave. He stood up against French President Emmanuel Macron and had some powerful things to say. He's from the Democratic Republic of Congo, but what he said represents how many Africans feel. Chisakoti isn't afraid to challenge France's bossy behavior toward Africa. He wants Europe to change the way they treat Africa. In his speech, he showed the spirit of African leaders who aren't afraid to speak their minds. He asked Europe to treat Africa as equals, not like they're better or know everything. Many African countries feel frustrated because they want a fair partnership, not to be treated like they can't handle things themselves. Chizakadi's strong and unwavering beliefs are like a call to action for Africa. He wants the power balance to change and for the continent to be recognized for its own decisions and choices. The West sometimes follows international rules when it suits them, but not always for everyone. Nelida Panda, a top diplomat from South Africa, has noticed this and is tired of the unfair treatment. Panda is brave and doesn't hesitate to speak up, demanding that the West treats everyone equally. She wants a fair and just world where the same rules apply to all nations, no matter how powerful they are. This would create a more balanced and accountable global order. Panda's stance inspires others who also want a world where justice and equality matter for everyone, no exceptions. By challenging the double standards, she's pushing for a more inclusive and fair system that treats all countries with respect and fairness. You know, it's quite interesting how some people conveniently embrace the notion of international rules when it aligns with their interests, but they conveniently disregard them when it doesn't suit them. They certainly don't apply international rules or laws equally in all circumstances. Take, for instance, the situation with Ukraine being invaded, suddenly sovereignty becomes crucial, but it was never deemed important for Palestine. While Mali's interim president, Colonel Assam Goita, may not be as vocal as other African leaders in expressing his discontent with the West, he demonstrates that actions speak louder than words. As the head of Mali's ruling junta, Goita has taken decisive and practical measures to assert Mali's independence. He has banned the activities of all non-governmental organizations that receive financial or other support from France, including those engaged in humanitarian work. Moreover, Kalita has taken a bold step by removing French media outlets such as France 24 and RFI from Mali, citing biased reporting. In 2022, 
He also ordered the departure of French troops who had been stationed in the country for nearly a decade, with limited progress in addressing Mali's terrorism challenges. Colonel Goiter's actions clearly demonstrate his unwavering commitment to asserting Mali's sovereignty and challenging the perceived influence and shortcomings of the West in addressing the country's security concerns. With his pragmatic approach, he embodies the age-old adage that actions speak louder than words, leaving a lasting impact on Mali's relationship with Western powers and reshaping the trajectory of the nation. South African opposition leader Julius Malema consistently champions the sovereign rights of South Africa and other African nations to establish their own alliances, even if they defy Western preferences. Malema fearlessly defends South Africa's decision to align with Russia, despite Western disapproval. In a notable interview with BBC's Sikon Saka, he boldly stated that he would provide weapons to Russia if he were the president. Moreover, Malema fearlessly highlights the double standards of the West by pointing out the calls for the arrest of leaders like Putin in the context of the Ukraine war, while influential figures such as Obama, George Bush, and Tony Blair, who have faced accusations of war crimes, have managed to evade legal consequences. Through his unwavering defense of South Africa's autonomy and his willingness to challenge Western narratives and biases, Malema solidifies his position as a vocal advocate for African nations' right to choose their own allies and pursue an independent foreign policy. Leaders like William Ruto advocate for a more efficient approach. The West's insistence on having all 54 African leaders attend summits has faced extensive criticism for being both demeaning and ineffective. Recognizing the impracticality and trivialization of such gatherings, Ruto proposes that Africa can be represented as a continent by special envoys who engage with Western leaders in a substantive and practical manner. This would allow for meaningful discussions and ensure that conferences go beyond mere photo opportunities. Such an approach respects the autonomy and dignity of African leaders, eliminating the notion of being summoned like children by world leaders. By advocating for a shift in how African engagement is structured, Ruto emphasizes the need for constructive dialogue and a more equitable platform for Africa's voice to be heard and respected on the global stage. As he puts it, if it's not going to be business as usual with these meetings involving Africa and countries like the US, Europe, Turkey, India, Russia, and Japan, it's not intelligent for all 54 of us to sit before one gentleman from another place. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda has emerged as a strong voice against neocolonialism, fearlessly confronting Western authorities and media with unwavering resolve. With his unapologetic demeanor, Kagome consistently challenges the condescending approach of Western countries and media outlets towards Africa. He has become a beacon of hope for Pan-Africanists and proud Africans alike. Through his insightful video interviews and impassioned summit speeches, Kagome fearlessly exposes the fallacy of Western nations positioning themselves as the sole arbiters of values, while implying that everyone else must conform. His unwavering mission is to rectify the misleading narrative that the West alone embodies values, emphasizing that Africans also possess rich and distinct values that deserve recognition and respect. Kagame's audacious stance not only inspires his fellow Africans but also emboldens a global audience to reconsider preconceived notions of Western superiority and embrace a more inclusive understanding of diverse cultural values. In May 2023, President Yoweri Museveni signed into law what is considered one of the world's strictest anti-gay legislations. He justified this move as necessary to protect Uganda's deeply ingrained values and traditions, which he believes are incompatible with homosexuality. Despite facing intense criticism and the potential for economic sanctions from Western powers, Museveni remains resolute in his conviction that homosexuality is an anomaly that does not align with Ugandan or African culture. He calls on the West to respect this fact and refrain from imposing what he perceives as an LGBTQ agenda on Africa. According to Museveni, the few cases of homosexuality in Uganda are considered deviations from the norm. They are seen as abnormal and not representative of the normal way of life. Museveni questions why there is an attempt to universalize and establish an abnormality as an alternative way of life. He suggests that if there is an abnormality, it should be treated and isolated rather than spread. 
Museveni expresses his skepticism towards certain Western groups and their leadership, hinting at a structural problem or a funny situation in those places. He acknowledges that there are still human beings with normal lives in the West, but he finds something wrong with certain groups and their approach. Museveni concludes by stating that when the bill comes, he will gather the MPs of Uganda to discuss the matter, as they seem to have the answer regarding homosexuality. It is clear to him that they were deviants, and he previously wondered whether the deviation was caused by hormones or psychology. Now, it seems that it is more related to psychology than biochemistry. And that wraps up our video on the nine African leaders who fearlessly take on the West and its media. If you enjoyed this video leave a like and a sub and we'll catch you guys in the next one.